What do you think about salt-free diets? Um, I know you like to recommend a little bit of salt with yeah. the starch, but I'm really curious to see what you have to say about that. Well, I was raised uh, to prescribe a salt-free diet. That's basically the only thing I was taught in medical school and in my residency about diet is you had low-sodium diet. Uh, there was essentially nothing else on the order sheet except for regular or low-sodium diet. So that's uh, the extent of my nutritional education from my, uh, my training. And, of course, that sticks with you. And uh, there are reasons for a low-salt diet, uh, particularly if you take people with severe hypertension, uh, certain terms of kidney disease, you can put them on something called the Kempner diet, which is a diet of rice and fruit and sugar and juices. And it's uh, Dr. Kempner from Duke University felt that the low-sodium aspect was most crucial. I don't deny in any way that he's right. And these, fair, are, are, these are approaches for the nearly dead the nearly dead people, and which I run into on occasion, and I do use that kind of diet. But for the average person, uh, I believe that uh, low-salt diets are not only not necessary, but uh, disadvantageous. But I'll leave it open for discussion for people who feel otherwise. I do understand their viewpoint. Uh, I don't hold that viewpoint uh, in my practice for a couple of reasons. If you read the New York Times from... Uh, last week, what is today, the 28th, so it's to be the 20, 27th or 21st, the editorial in the New York Times, you'll find an editorial about low-salt diets and how <clears throat> it was recently report, uh, reported that they was in, the, I believe, the New England Journal of Medicine, that low-salt diets are actually hazardous to health and that people should be consuming between 3,000 and 6,000 milligrams of sodium a day. Oh, wow. Now, very high-salt diets, let's just say that you know, you can run into problems, and that may be true or may not, but let's just talk about a reasonable sodium intake of three to 6,000 milligrams a day, which fits into what Americans now eat and uh, is a little higher than we uh, serve at our programs. Well, uh, this kind of sodium intake uh, may be advantageous, you may predict it to be advantageous because we are seekers of salt. You see, we have these desires, uh, the tip of the tongue tastes with pleasure, sodium, salt, minerals, and uh, these desires we have, like the desire for sweet and salt and nice smells and uh, <laughs> nice visual sights and so on. I mean, you like to look at flowers, not slaughterhouses. I mean, right. there are all these all these senses with, that we have that are rewarded by things that are good to us. And a salt is a rewarding sense. So I don't think nature made a mistake by making us salt seekers. I think when we deny that uh, desire to seek salt uh, and you're on a very, very low salt diet, you have to make some cardiovascular metabolic adjustments that may be disadvantageous to the body and may increase its risk of heart disease and death. These are very complicated discussions that I could go through superficially and not with the expertise that other people could, but just let me lay it open as that's what the research says is there are actually metabolic explanations as to why severe salt deprivation would cause uh, the body to uh, to go into a survival mode and some of the effects that are caused may be disadvantageous. Now, all that said, and my believing that a little sodium uh, uh, would not be harmful and could actually be helpful, and telling you that uh, not just a little bit of the scientific literature, but I believe the majority supports that point of view, uh, two things I want to say. One is that our program, we serve a low sodium meal plan. Uh, in the sense that we don't add much salt, we add maybe a little soy sauce. And so I would guess that our intake of sodium is probably 1,000 milligrams at most a day for participants. It can be focused lower, but it's about 1,000 milligrams. And then we put a salt shaker on the table. And not many people use the salt shaker, but just say they do. If they put a half a teaspoon of salt on their food, they just brought it up to 2,000 milligrams of sodium which is considered a low-salt diet if you end up in the intensive care unit or the cardiac care unit, you're put on a low-sodium diet or a low-salt diet, which is 2,000 milligrams of sodium. 
So we even at 2,000 milligrams of sodium, I fall below what the New York Times and the New England Journal of Medicine suggested at three to 6,000 milligrams. But fine, the important thing is that I've got to get people to eat the food. And the biggest detraction to a healthy diet, a vegetarian, a starch-based, uh, a diet without traditional foods like bacon and ham and cheese, uh, the uh, major obstacle is that people find it bland. And the reason they find it bland is because of the lack of sodium. It's just like if I fed them pork or chicken or cheese without any salt. Well, you can't get people to eat saltless cheese. They, they absolutely won't eat it. I tried when I was a resident on the kidney wards. Uh, you wouldn't feed somebody boiled chicken or boiled beef or even, even cooked over a grill. They'd find it unappealing unless they added a load of salt to it. And they made ham or bacon or steak with a, you know, a sixteenth of an inch of salt covering each side of the steak. Or they put sauces that contain salt, like A1 steak sauce and soy sauce and whatever. Uh, salt is crucial to people's enjoyment. Now, you can't adjust to the amount of sodium in the diet. But I, I find that uh, just because of, of years of experience, not because of any effort. I never made an effort to eat a low-salt diet. It's just my exposure has been low-salt. Uh, that you know, I find 1,000 milligrams of sodium more than enough, and 2,000 is too much for me, I would guess, based on my palate. But I could easily bump it up uh, by adding a little salt. It take me a couple weeks to bump up to a new level. And likewise, if you want to uh, have a lower sodium intake, you can bump down in your adaptation in about two weeks. Uh, what's good or not good for you? I think that, uh, that I've got it right. I think that for most people, uh, almost everybody, adding a little salt uh, puts the body under less distress is a proper reward and no question about it it makes uh it makes those potatoes and that rice and those beans go down so much better and so i would suggest a little salt and we use, use a little simple sugar and a little spice just to get people to eat the food that's the main reason right and 1000 to 2000 milligrams like you were talking about that's not a whole lot compared to the standard way of eating. Well, 2,000 milligrams is called a low sodium diet in the intensive care unit in a hospital. That gives you some idea. You can drop the sodium intake in food if you do it with careful effort down to say 100 milligrams. Right. Typical diets uh, with no salt added, carefully avoiding all salt are about uh, three to 500 milligrams. Our diet, as I say, in the clinic is probably 1,000 milligrams at most. You can bump it down to 500. And uh, if you, a half teaspoon of salt is 1,100 milligrams, so you just added another 1,000 milligrams, so you're up to 2,000 milligram diet with a half teaspoon of salt. Typical American eats uh, three to 5,000. Asians on high salt diets like Korean soldiers back in the 50s were studied. They had about 1,100 milligrams of salt. So, you know, yeah. Sodium, let's see, was it sodium? Probably 1,100 milligrams. Right, anyways, they used to eat a lot of salt. There have been various populations in Japan and Asia that have really been on very high salt diets. And I believe it's 11 to 1,500 milligrams of sodium that we're talking about. I could be correct. Anyway, they're very high salt diets. And people did well. Uh, I don't, I know for one thing for sure. Salt is a misguided effort on the part of hospitals and doctors, but that's all they know is they focus on the salt, but what they should focus on is the, is the packages the salt comes in. It's, it's the things that deliver the salt to people. That's why they're sick. It's not the salt. It's the bacon. It's not the pig. It's the, I mean, it's the pig, not the salt, that's making them sick in the bacon. So if you, uh, you get most of your salt, 80% of your salt is called non-discretionary. In other words, you have no choice. It comes in your packaged foods, particularly salami, other lunch meats, uh, packaged meats, uh, all cheese is just loaded with sodium. So that's non-discretionary sodium. If you get that out of the diet and you just use discretionary sodium, which is what you put a little on the surface of the food, you'd be way, way ahead.